I'm Dylan. Hi, I'm Mike. And welcome back to Story Hustler, Murder, Mayhem, PTSD, episode three. Three? Yeah. Can you believe we're this far into it? Uh, I don't feel like that's that far. And we still have a security... And we still got... A security problem. We gotta get better, <laughs> we gotta get better security in this gym. We do. Yeah. Well, let's get, uh, let's get to it. The truest of true crimes. Yeah. Uh, so you've been getting a lot of calls lately to obviously uh, rehash all the stories that you've covered, blast from the past. And I think that's one of the reasons we, you and I, decided to do this because yeah. uh, it does seem to be that uh, for whatever reason, getting frequently getting calls from podcasts and YouTube channels mm -hmm. and the Discovery Channel. And it whoever, is the future. Whoever, yeah, whoever's doing true crime. And, and of course, one of the, the, the calls or the stories that I, I get calls about the most consistently is Warren, Warren Jeffs. Jeffs. A story yeah. you covered for majority of your career? Yeah, uh, did too damn long. Too, too damn, damn long. long. That is but, for uh, sure. Yeah, and so anyhow, I'm getting phone calls uh, just within the last, you know, some weeks. Yeah. Uh, a new television show uh, that is doing something on the aftermath, I guess, of what's going on in Colorado that's City today. Yeah, sure, absolutely. There's a bar there now, yeah. and for those of you who don't know, that's a huge yeah, deal. The, the, edge the of Mormons the, are very against alcohol, and especially and the, the fundamentalists. The fundamentalists. So yeah, the fact that there's a brew pub in, in uh, Colorado City blew my mind when I was up Progress. there. Progress. But yeah, but, but all this to say, th that's the story that you know, I get called about Ramirez, I get called about OJ, I, some of these stories that I had some hand in. But by far and away, the one I get called about the most is Warren Jeffs. And mm -hmm. So I figured, we, I've written extensively about that in the book, so I figured we could talk about it here. I mean, and, you are one of the only reporters that consistently covered it, and I won't give you all the credit in the world because a lot of the credit actually belongs to the women inside. And that's why, and this is the, the, the whole discussion of sort of credit involving chasing Warren Jeffs mm -hmm. into a prison cell. And, uh, and the changes that are now afoot in Colorado City as a result of a federal court uh, trial here in Phoenix some years ago, those two events changed mm -hmm. changed the dynamics for every forever. Uh, but but in telling the story, and this is my my beef with often my fellow journalists and over the years, and I've had plenty of beefs with them mm -hmm. uh, in telling the story. It's it's uh, they fail to recognize that really the people who made all the difference in this story were a handful of women. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, uh, and I hope that I talk about most of them in this book. Yep. And it, I, you know, I can name the names. Lenore Holm, a woman who stood up against Warren Jeffs many, many years ago because her 16-year-old daughter had basically been given by Jeffs to a man who was 32 years old, already had a wife and 10 kids. So this 16-year-old girl is taken from her mother, the mother's distraught, and she stands up and tells Warren, hell no, I don't want that to happen, I want my daughter back. Well, what does Jeff do? He turns around and tries to evict Lenore and her family, and she had a large family, other children, and mm -hmm. her husband, Milton, tried to throw them off the land. Early case, early case. That when was this? What year, you think? It was 20 years ago, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. This was early on, Warren had not assumed power, but all this to say, this very brave woman named Lenore Holm stood up because her daughter had been absconded with to give it to an already married guy. She raised hell about it. They tried to evict her from her land. She stood up, took him to court, and won a very significant ruling in Kingman many years ago that, that predates uh, many of the land claims. You know, one of the control mechanisms that Lauren Jeffs had, he controlled all the land and he could mm -hmm. throw people off. Well, because of Lenore's standing up, objecting to her daughter's marriage and objecting to be ev being evicted from their home. She won her landmark case. And, and these are these are the people that you, you we're gonna forget about. And then and then people But you, they're the reason that all this changed. Well and, and then they stood and then they stood on the shoulder, you know, was people Flora Jessup, mm -hmm. a name that if, if people who know this story, uh, you know, sort of a lightning rod figure in this whole yep. thing. But I, I tell you, we wouldn't, Warren Jeffs wouldn't be sitting down, have his ass in a Texas prison uh, cell right now if it wasn't for Flora Jessup. 
and lucky I, enough to have met her. Yeah, you know, and, and I raised a lot of hell with her, mm -hmm. and she, and you know, she's the reason, the force of the force of change. Penny Peterson, one yep. of Flora's good friends, Penny helped her younger sister Ruth Stubbs escape from Colorado City. That set in motion another one of the most significant trials because Ruth Stubbs, this young woman, gets out when she's 19. She has two children. She's pregnant with her third child. Turns out at the age of 16, she was married off to a 32-year-old cop. Again, a guy with about two other wives and had about oh 20 children. A cop. A cop. So in the you town. know, and, and it was the case that in many ways was the beginning of the end for Warren. Oh. Yes, it set in motion the dominoes. And, and there were a lot that went down, but suddenly we had this young woman, Ruth Stubbs, who, who came out and uh, made this accusation that she had been given as a plural bride and impregnated by, she, she, they are in, a, in a marriage arranged by Warren Jeffs, and she was given to a certified police officer. So it raised, you know, it, it broke. <sighs> they, they, we ended up, they ended up prosecuting the guy, sending him to prison, and it Rightfully was, so. Yeah, and Ron Holm, a famous case, and uh, and uh, I honestly say that it was when uh, Ron Holm, the week he was sent to prison uh, in, in St. George, Utah, and found guilty, was the very week that Warren Jeffs began buying up all of those compounds mm -hmm. all over the United States, like the one down in Texas, because, and it's my theory, that Jeffs, for the first time in his life, actually was prophetic actually was sort of a prophet and realized if they can bust a cop for an underage marriage that I performed, then it's only a matter of time before they come after me. And this is where we're ratcheting up the heat on Warren with each one of these stories. Oh, yeah. And that's the thing. Closer that's, and closer. And that's the thing that sent him running. Uh, the, the Ruth Stubbs case. Boy, did he run. Yeah, and, and so, and I, you know, I, I hope Ruth, and, and, and again, her brave sister, Penny Peterson, should not be forgotten in Arizona, in, in American history. Uh, and, and then you, they stood, and then there's some other women came along. Oh, I've been doing this long enough. I've seen a couple of generations of brave mm -hmm. women who have really been the instruments of change. A woman named Carolyn Jessup wrote a very powerful yep. book called Escape. Uh, you know, a, a profound moment. And then you have the, uh, the Wall sisters. First, Alyssa Wall, uh, a young woman who, who got out, and, and she was the one that uh, was forced into a marriage with her cousin, a uh, marriage performed by Warren Jess. And that's the first time they actually, they busted Warren, found him, busted him, you know, near Vegas mm -hmm. uh, on the run. And they put him on trial in the case of uh, Alyssa Wall, uh, and he was found guilty in a Utah court, St. George. Very important that, you know, Alyssa should not be forgotten. Her older sister, Rebecca Wall, was the young woman who stepped forward when she was married to Warren Jeffs. She's the one who stepped forward and helped the Texas people put together that entire case when they found that just trove of evidence when they went on to the YFC right? Yeah. I'm going on with stories about famous women. I mean, there's women. just countless women that but, should but, be credited with. But this, this is when this when is people it. read stories and when you see either either movies about this or documentaries about this or books. If if the books or the movies or the documentaries make it sound like the there was some man, some some, some white knight some cop or private investigator or, or or famous uh, author or some other bullshit, some guy comes along and makes you it, it presents the image that they were the ones who brought Jeffs down. I just say that's bullshit because really it all started with these handful of women. You know, and a couple, there were a couple of men, I think, along the way that stepped up and did their jobs. I like to think that we helped tell the story. There were a couple of, you know, there's there a, a lot of men who didn't step up. A, a, a reporter up in Utah named Ben Winslow who did a great job. A guy named John Doherty here. There were a handful of people that did the right thing and even a few cops, but most of the, the cops, most mm -hmm. of the politicians, and most of the men, you know, didn't do shit no. to help this cause. No. And it was the and the and so if if I do nothing else with this book, the handful of people that may or may not read it, I hope they recognize that that there are some true heroes in the story that that helped land Warren Jeffs in a Texas prison cell and helped the the foundation 
uh, of a federal lawsuit that forever sort of changed the dynamics. They sent people up there and, and, and took away the government from the FLDS church as a result of this federal ruling. And that's what changed. And, uh, and that's why they now have a bar. <laughs> that's why they now have a bar. The, uh, the, Full circle. The Edge of the Earth Brewery. And it was one of these days we're going to go up there and I'm going to show you the wall. Mm -hmm. In the in the there's a there's the in the city it was office built just for you. Well, this is what apparently the city officials explained the expenditure for this expensive security wall in the in the city offices. They said they put it up to keep Mike Watkins from showing up. So, did it? I mean, it clearly didn't work. But well, I still went up. I just wall? ended up banging at the door, the the the, the, the window, the mirrored windows. Come on, folks, you know I'm here. <laughs> Near the end, I, I told you, near the end, I, I used to watch reporters go up there and they'd get oh. chased around by people. I couldn't find people. You know, they had cameras everywhere, so as soon as you got in town, and I have a feeling I mean, that you, you once, mentioned the Texas thing and how they were just like inviting news trucks in and you that, know, giving them their story, but the one group of news well, whenever I go they up, keep out where you they yeah, keep you yeah, out you're yeah. the only journalist that they keep out you're referring to the famous uh, incident uh, down in Texas right after they raided uh, Warren Jeff's YFC ranch and uh, and the was a, the, there was a, the kids had all been taken off and there was a moment when the FLDS community and their lawyers, their high-priced lawyers in Salt Lake and Phoenix, they're pretty good at seizing the moment for the right PR. Mm -hmm. And so in the wake of the raid, the kids had been taken, and they basically, the, the lawyers for the FLDS community just stood at the front gates of that big compound down in Texas and were just ushering in live trucks. Everybody who wanted to come in, every knucklehead who had a pencil and a piece of paper and called themselves a journalist, they were letting them in. So the mothers down there could cry and say, you got to give our kids back. And they, and they certainly shouldn't be entitled to have their say. It was, but everybody in the world was invited. My cameraman and I were down covering the trial at the time. We heard that this little sh dog and pony show was going on. So we pulled up in front of the YFC Gates Ranch, parked our car. And we were just going to walk down and shoot some video. And one of his attorneys, uh, Warren's attorney, is a guy that I know very well named Jim Bradshaw from Salt Lake City. He sees me coming and he says, hey, you, you're not welcome. <laughs> I think I, I was the only reporter in America that wasn't allowed onto the ride. I feel like they were definitely just waiting for you to show no, up. Well, so I was they, thinking they, they were certainly alerted and they knew yeah. and, and have given our long history. I mean, Warren called me out in one of his sermons and put a hit on me. So it's oh, not like they yeah. didn't know Tell me. Tell that story. I That's a good one. That's we, a good one. Yeah, one of the, it was, I've heard this for many years. And when after the uh, the uh, the, the uh, Texas Rangers uh, went onto the compound and seized all the documents and found Warren's rape bed, built the the rape bed in the temple, and yep. the audio tapes of him raping young girls. And we'll talk Horrible about that. Stuff. We will talk about that trial at some later date because that Texas right. trial when they played Warren's rape tapes, uh, yeah. for lack of a better way to say was one of the most stunning moments I've ever heard in court. But, uh, you know, I, again, uh, I'm going around in circles with Warren Jeffs. But, uh, oh, they find documents, uh, uh, the uh, Texas Rangers find documents during the raid. And uh, I, uh, a cop buddy of mine, uh, Gary Angles, and I started hearing rumors that we were mentioned uh, in a none too flattering way in one of Warren's sermons, and apparently he preached uh, sort of hell and damnation on Gary and I. And, uh, you know, I'm very flattered by that. And he said to his followers that they would be forgiven if they did the Lord's dirty work. Yes. Like, Go to old yeah, well, whatever. cops over take here. A, take a number. So, uh, the, uh, but, uh, I was, I'm proud that uh, I made my way onto, uh, I've always said, yeah, you said you're judged by your enemies. That's you a good enemy you to be judged Friends by. and your enemies. And, and friends, yeah. And, yeah, and I, can, I certainly, I, I know that I wound up on Warren Jeff's enemies list, and I wound up on Joe Arpaio's enemies list. Oh, yes. Now, I'm pretty certain there's proof positive that, that, you know, I was on the list. We'll get so, to that in a later episode. Yeah, so, and I'm proud of those things. I, I will not deny that. You know, you can get, you can get awards and accolades, but... Uh, when you uh, work your way on to uh, being the on the enemies list of people like Jeff's and Arpaio, 
I don't always feel real good about that. As you should. Yeah, well, I feel good about saying that here? about my father. Yeah, that's kind of good. All right, we good? We're good. Uh, yeah, yeah, again, if there's anything, you know, if it, uh, there's things that uh, if people are interested in this book, there's definitely people I want to make, I want to pay tribute to. I want to pay tribute mm -hmm. to Flora and Penny and Ruth definitely. and uh, Carolyn and uh, Alyssa and Rebecca and names that should not be forgotten. Okay, in his and history, incredibly strong Fawn, and Fawn Broadbent, women. Fawn Holm, uh, you know, just a number of, of women who have been amazingly powerful, and they're my heroes. Uh, and and if anybody comes along and tells you that some some famous guy or another was responsible for putting uh, Warren where he uh, is, they're lying to. You. They're they're stretching they're the story. They don't know because really the credit uh, the credit really lies to a, ha a handful of uh, you know women who just we're not going to take no for an answer and just raised a lot of hell. That's for damn sure. And I'm proud to help them out a little bit with that, so all yeah, that's you done say. good. All right, so we should, should we say uh, sign off and good night? And, yeah, and uh, give us your input again. You know, we'll we will link the book. Get security if we get this guy out of here. I feel like you are security. It's a small set. It's a small set. Don't, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'm up to that anymore. Yeah, I don't know if you are either. Yeah, never. <laughs> well, signing off for episode three of Story Hustler. Murder, mayhem, PTSD. Peace out. Bye.